Welcome back, this is Daniel, and in this video we're going to talk about a Scala-specific concept, which is case classes. Cool, in IntelliJ, let's create a new Scala application. Right-click on part 2 OP, new Scala class, we're going to call this case classes. Make this an object, and of course extends app, as usual. Switching to presentation mode. Now, the problem that we want to solve is that often for lightweight data structures, which is a lot of the time, like for class person, we need to re-implement all sorts of boilerplate, like companion objects, like standard methods for serializing and for pretty printing, like equals, hash code, to string, for pretty string representation, and so on and so forth. And case classes are an ideal solution to this problem. Case classes are an exceptionally useful shorthand for defining a class and a companion object and a lot of sensible defaults in one go. They're really perfect for creating this kind of lightweight data holding classes with uh, really minimum of hassle. So the way that we create a case class in Scala is just write case class and then say person with name string and age and int. So the only difference is the keyword case here. But this keyword is so powerful because this declaration does multiple things. First of all, class parameters are promoted to fields. So if I say val person, let's say Jim, equals new person with Jim and age uh, 34, then if I print line gym.name, then that's a valid thing because it's a case class. If I hadn't put in the keyword case here, the parameter name would not have been a field, right? So case classes promote all parameters to fields. Second thing, a sensible to string for ease of debugging. So if I print line gym.toString, then uh, watch what happens. It prints person with Jim 34. This is a pretty decent uh, two-string representation. If I hadn't put in a case here, then uh, the two-string representation, let's just ignore the name, the two-string representation would have been something very cryptic, like person at uh, a very weird hash code over here, right? So the case class have two string representations which are really sane. By the way, I think I forgot to tell you something that Java uh, already does as a syntactic sugar. So if I print line Jim to string, that's one thing. But if I print line Jim as is, this will automatically delegate to the two string method. So if I print line the object Jim, then that will turn Jim into its two string method. So a small digression, print line object or instance because object has a very special meaning in Scala, as you've um, found out. So print line instance is actually print line instance dot to string. This is another form of syntactic sugar. So if I print line Jim, I'm going to get person with Jim and age 34. Third thing that I wanted to tell you is that equals, let's call this three equals and hash code implemented out of the box, which make uh, case classes especially important for use in collections. So if I define a new uh, person called Jim, let's say Jim2 is a new person with the same parameters, Jim34, 34, 34. If I print line uh, Jim equals Jim2, then that will return true. So if I right click and run this, I'm actually going to see true here. If I hadn't used the keyword case, and just ignoring the name for now, I would have seen false here in the console because Jim and Jim2 are two different instances of class person, but the equals method was not implemented. So the default from any ref was picked which by default for uh, different references, it returns false. All right, so let's get back to the case class. Speaking of scenarios with duplicates, next thing that I wanna show you is the fact that case classes have 
handy copy methods. So instead of uh, defining a new person with the same parameters as Jim, I can just say, well, let's say Jim3 equals Jim.copy. And copy creates a new instance of this case class. What's more, the copy methods also receive named parameters. So if I receive the um, parameter age equals like 45, this is a valid use of the copy method. And it will return uh, another instance of person with the same parameters as Jim, except age, which in this case is a different value, 45. So if I print line Jim3, this will return a new instance of person with the age 45. Right, so person Jim 45. Next super feature. Case classes have companion objects. So if I say val the person equals person, then this is a valid definition. Person is the companion object of this case class. Just because I've used the keyword case makes the compiler automatically create companion objects for this class. Now, companion objects also have some handy factory methods. So if, for example, I create a new person called Mary, I can actually call this companion object's apply method. So remember the apply method um, makes the companion object callable like a function, and I can just use parameters, Mary and 23. So I've just constructed a person. This actually delegates to the person's apply method. So the companion object's apply method does the same thing as the constructor. So in practice, we don't really use the keyword new when instantiating a case class. We only use this form. All right, next super feature. Yeah, I know, case classes are a goldmine. So case classes are serializable which make case classes especially useful when dealing with distributed systems. You can send instances of case classes through the network and in between JVMs. This is especially important when dealing, for example, in the Akka framework. Akka deals with sending serializable messages through the network, and uh, our messages are, in general, in practice, case classes. Finally, and uh, this is particularly important um, in practice and in this course, is that case classes have extractor patterns. What this means is that case classes can be used in pattern matching, which is one of the most powerful Scala features, and we're going to talk about pattern matching later in this course. I also want you to know that there is such a thing as a case object. All right, so this acts like a case class, except it's an object. So if, for example, I have case object United Kingdom, which has, for example, a def name, which is a string, and say the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, then uh, this is a case object. Case objects have the same property as case classes, except they don't get companion objects because they are their own companion objects. Cool. Now, the exercise for this lecture is going to be to expand my list to use case classes and case objects whenever you see fit. So simple as that. So pause the video now for a minute or two and go through my list and see what you can convert to case classes and case objects. So I just switch to my list and I will convert the empty uh, object to a case object and the cons class to a case class. And that, my folks, is it. But with this keyword case, I've made my list extremely powerful. I've basically implemented equals and hash code out of the box so I can use the list in collections as well. And I've made my list serializable, which makes it extremely powerful to use in distributed networks. So if I go down here with the list of integers, and if I clone this, for example, I create a um, clone of list of integers with the same values. If I print line, 
uh, clone list of integers equals list of integers, integers, yes, then that will return true just because I've used the keyword case. If I didn't use the keyword case, then I would need to define a recursive equals method, which would have been a great headache for a list because I would need to compare all the elements recursively. So this is just one of the features that I've added with not even a line of code with a simple word. All right. So um, another example of the power of the Scala language. All right. So let's wrap this up. A small but powerful Scala feature. Case classes are a fast way of defining light data structures with as little boilerplate as possible and with quite a lot of features. So if I've defined a case class, then I get a number of things out of the box. For one, we already have companion objects already implemented with handy apply methods. We have a lot of sensible methods implemented out of the box, for example, equals hash code and to string. We auto promote parameters to fields so that we can use them as if they are vowels and handy other methods like cloning. Case classes are also serializable and they're also extractable in pattern matching, which is something that we are going to talk about later. We also discussed case objects, which act in the same way as case classes, only that they are objects. Cool, another weapon in your arsenal. I am Daniel, I hope you found this enjoyable and useful, and I'll see you in the next video.